Okay. Well, good afternoon, my friends. Good afternoon. Today, my session is on social media, hating it. And I am going to give a little um, sideline to this, is that I'm going to use this in the words of business. And when I say your business, it could be your blog, it could be your podcast, it could be your videos, it could be your business, literally your brick and mortar. That's how I base this talk today. So when I say your business, don't think it's the thing that makes you money. It's that separation from your life, your social media life that isn't, um, this is what I ate for breakfast, basically. <laughs> okay, so dear social media, I hate you. <laughs> I very recently started to work with a lot of small businesses and whether it be talking to them with my magazine or in any other entrepreneur group, they have this frustration with social media. They hate the algorithms, they hate how the platforms work, they hate that it's a time suckage. They hate it, they hate it, they hate it, but yet every single one of them uses it. They don't use it to their fullest potential, and they don't use it in the way that it was intended to be used. And I say that with a grain of salt, because social media is what you make it, basically, for your business or even your home life. So the first question I always get asked is, why should I bother? I have a brick and mortar, I sell fabric, why should I even bother being on Facebook? Why should I even be bother being on any of them at this point? And I always ask them back this, what do you want your online presence to look like? What do you want to look like to your customer, your client, your listener, your listener, you, the person who watches your videos nonstop? What do you want to look like to them? And that's what you base your, face, your online presence with. All social media is not the same. So when I ask them this question, I say, you look for what, this is a little bit one-on-one. -on -one. So understand that it's a little bit things that everybody knows in social media if you use it, but how to adjust it for your business. You identify your customer's needs and information and line of communication, and you identify your business needs, basically to inform and sell. We're all here to make money, right? Especially in our business, we all want to make money at it. So we need to inform them and sell them something on our social media. So I always, they always ask me in the end, why should I have Facebook? Well, it's longer posts. This is the dog moment I always tell them. You have longer posts. Your video, photo, and artwork are easily used and uploaded. You can post a survey or post a document very easily. So if you want to download a PDF, things like that, anything that the client or customer can take away from it, you can put on Facebook. It's a little bit more versatile. We'll get into the hating the Facebook algorithm a little bit later because then you're gonna say, well, wait, nobody sees my stuff. Uh, why should you tweet? If they Facebook, they don't tweet. Or they use their Twitter strictly for like Instagram shouting. A tweet is more direct. It's 140 characters. Video, photo, and artwork. Did anybody see the last update of Twitter um, on Android and iOS? Your videos play automatically now as people thumb through them. Unless they have it turned off on your phone, on their phone, your videos will automatically play. It is hilarious and funny all at the same time because they don't have it in real time to where when it leaves your screen, it stops playing. So it could sound like a jumbled up mess. So I'm telling you right now to check that feature next time you update your phone. However, it could work for your advantage because if you can get somebody to pay attention to your tweet in the first five seconds of that video, Congratulations, they're gonna click on and finish listening to it. So that's a little bit of an advantage. The downside to Twitter, and I'm gonna say this about Facebook too, is you're easier to get lost. We have a joke, especially at PodCamp, that we always joke that 
Twitter is like a cocktail party where everybody's shouting. So you're basically in a room of hundreds of other people shouting at each other what you want to inform them, but if you don't catch one person's attention, it, your tweets are just getting lost in the shuffle. I think last year's statistic was um, a tweet lasts for about four seconds. That's it, you have four seconds uh, to attract somebody's attention on Twitter. It can work for an advantage and it, it can. I've gotten more followers on Twitter than I do on Facebook recently. And it's just, it's a different algorithm. Where you get lost on Facebook because of the algorithm and your post will not get seen by everybody, Twitter that doesn't happen. Your post can get seen by everybody if you choose them to be. Um, Instagram. Instagram can be used as a very interesting marketing tool. Um, purely art, you can show the product and you can push to Twitter and Facebook. It has seamless integration with those two. And I say that very loosely, only in the fact that it basically posts the pictures, no problem. However, if you get a little bit of wordy on your description on Instagram, it, the Twitter won't show up properly. So I do warn everybody of that. It's 140 characters no matter what. It'll continue with the dot, dot, dot kind of thing. However, again, I don't suggest using your Twitter just for Instagram. <laughs> Um, I do suggest something with Instagram though for brick and mortars. If you do not have a product to show, you can kind of make like an ad. Like recently I was working with an event space and I said, well, you use Instagram a lot to take pictures of the event space. You need to make a one page ad or a little ad photo and put that on Instagram and make sure that you send that out a few times a day. Just a suggestion. I mean, you don't have to always just show the product. You can show anything else that's relevant. And with repost and things like that, you can get reposted in Instagram if your photos are interesting enough. There is an app for that. Uh, repost, I highly suggest. You can, uh, if somebody tags you in a photo and you want to send it out to your followers, that's how you do that is you just repost it and send it out. Pinterest. So I'm going to go against what was said this morning on how Pinterest is um, not. It's, it's valuable for business, but it hasn't come on yet. And they're making more and more adjustments for it to where now there's a buy button. If you didn't catch that, if you have an Etsy store or an Amazon store and you push through to Pinterest, there is now a buy button where they can one click and purchase that item. <laughs> so whatever photograph that you took, it's no longer a link into Amazon and a purchase. It's literally buy and it's sent. So it's a really great tool. Not to mention the demographic. Still the demographic on Pentagris is it's mostly women, stay at home moms, so, and they spend the household money so if you have a product, or you're a mommy blogger, or you help moms or the household, this is a valuable tool. And I, I highly recommend using it. I mean, it, it just, it couldn't hurt. And there's integration into schedulers with it now too. So I'll, I'll get onto that too. So first of all, you have to pick which social media will work best for you. And sometimes it's all three and sometimes it's all four. And there are a lot more than this, trust me. I mean, I'm touching on the four major points. <laughs> there are other ones to use. So after you pick your social media and you wonder why you're doing it, the next thing I always hear a complaint about is, can my marketing not be a time suckage? Um, the number one complaint is I can't find every day to do it. I can't find time in my day to do it, nor do I feel like I'm t spending my time wisely doing it. And I tell them, well, are you on Facebook anyways? Like, doesn't everybody just check it while you're eating breakfast in the morning? Like, <laughs> technically, you could be doing business stuff right then and there. Do I recommend it? No. 
I am fully in belief of what um, Chris said this morning about the four hour work day. I was out of work for the past five months um, and I was working just strictly freelance and I only worked four hours a day. I highly believed in it. I spent the rest of the day working out, watching television, or doing fine art. I did not work an eight hour day. Because I don't believe that your social media marketing should be more than an hour of your week. And I will tell you, there's an easy way to do this. So the number one recommendation that I have is the Social Media Monday. You can pick whatever day you want. Some brick and mortar, some businesses do not open on Sunday and Monday. Great, make this your Tuesday. You can then schedule out your entire day to only be marketing. Do not touch anything else. Check your email for a half an hour. Do whatever you need to do to make sure the business runs seamlessly and then strictly focus on marketing for the day. You will sum up your entire week of marketing in one day. So for instance, you can start out the morning between 8 and 11 with writing blog posts for the week. If you have your ideas pre-mapped out, this is easy. Another suggestion I always have is have a notebook on you no matter where you go every single day. You have an idea for a blog post, take it out, write it down, write down a few notes, but do not write the actual blog post. Just write down the ideas. Then on your social media day, or your marketing day, you have a few hours to write up blog posts. It, and at this point, you should have an editorial schedule, which I will go on to the next slide. It's basically how many times do you want to blog throughout the week? Some people do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, some it's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. It's really your decision and what you feel like your client is getting the best from you or your customer or whoever your audience is, I should say audience. From 11 to 3, I suggest a scheduler setup and I'll go into schedulers in a couple minutes. Schedulers are very easy to use. They're very user friendly and you can set up all of your social media blasts for the entire week. Four hours, I'm, that's a lot <laughs> of time for that. Mine usually takes about two hours. And again, it's whatever I, I make a list of the things that I should talk about that week, and I set up the scheduler, and then I shut my, I shut it, I send it to go. It doesn't need to be thought over, it doesn't need to be fussed over, except for in dire emergencies, it should be fussed over. Um, between three and six, I said set up next week. That's still only if needed. If you want to start to think about your next week, or that is you need a special blog post to go out the following Wednesday, you actually can write it at that point. You've only had a half of a work day, eight to six. I mean, I'm counting in there an hour lunch, hour and a half lunch. You don't even need all that amount of time. You can sum it up into one day. This also, at three to six, you can be making artwork, any advertisements you need to do, logo touch-ups, reworking the website, things like that. Anything to also boost the marketing. If you need to clean up your Facebook page a little, change the, the header, anything like that, make events, things like that, that should be time for that. And you can schedule events, you can schedule posts, you can do all that in Facebook to do later on during the week. So that's something to, to, to be plugged in at that time. So put everything into one day. That way you won't have to fuss with it every single day. You won't have to carve out an hour or two every day. Editorial calendars. There is a bunch of plugins on WordPress for editorial um, calendars. I just use a pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> I am probably old school in this because I don't want a little ding on my phone every single time it's time for me to write because I don't feel that's the way you get inspired. Um, if you Google 
editorial calendar, there is a ton underneath images that you can just print off your printer and fill them in by hand. And there's a ton of PDFs that marketers love to put up on their website and you can download and then fill it out in Adobe Acrobat. They're easy. But what they do is basically they'll highlight the week, what your Twitter followers were, your Facebook. The one I have is really cool because it actually will make me track the numbers of how many followers I have on each social media platform, any notes I want to take, and then um, what days I post what. So for a while there, we were doing posts every single day on Bold, and that got to be a little bit much where posts were getting lost. So I scaled it back to three a day. But in those Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would write the note, republish yesterday's, or posts last week's, repost last week's, or re-shout out last week's post. Um, a good idea too is to hold on to your editorial calendars from week to week because I just read this newest, this really new article about um, blogging and they actually had a great suggestion that you can actually go back 30 days in your posts and reblog or not reblog them, but reshout them out. As long as it's not time sensitive information, why not? And I'll get on to why that's pertinent. That is pertinent because the first time that you send it, those 100 people may not be the second, may not be the same 100 people the second time. I don't know if that makes sense. So you have 200 followers on Facebook, and you send out a post about, well, I'll talk about what I just said this morning, blueberry muffins, recipe about blueberry muffins. You send out it on Facebook, link it back to your blog, it gets 100 hits. Fabulous, wonderful, you did a great, successful day. Three weeks go by, two weeks go by, and you're like, well, I want to go back and talk about the blueberry muffins again. You send it back out. You get another 100 hits. Those 100 people, the two or three weeks later, are not the same as the first 100 people. So you're seeing a whole new audience. You have a whole different flux of people seeing it. So you actually can go back 30 days. And as long as it's not time pertinent, like an event, then you can reblog it, resend it out you may find a whole different audience and a whole different interaction two or three weeks later. So I highly suggest an editorial calendar. It, it's more effective with blogging than, it, it, it actually, what it says it does, it, it does good for magazines, blogs, podcasts, and all of that. A social scheduler. This is the fun one because I mentioned that there's a few hour block in, on your social media day for a social scheduler. I'm gonna mention Hootsuite. I don't know anything about it. We used it for about three months and then we quit. <laughs> it basically works itself around an Excel spreadsheet that will send out your Twitter, your Facebook, all on its own. You basically fill out this spreadsheet with links and what you want to say and then you hit send and it works on its own. That's essentially what a social scheduler is. Um, I will talk about Buffer because that's what I use. Um, not that I work for them or they're paying me any money to endorse them. I just think they're a lot, they're dummy down. They're not that complicated. I don't have to overthink it to use it. I don't, you know, it's simplify, simplify, simplify. You want to ask how I only work four hours a day? That's one of them. I work with the most simple scheduler I could find. Um, basically, you go in, and it's an app on your phone. You can set up multiple accounts. There is a fee if you do a certain amount of accounts. And you can send to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Pinterest, multiple accounts. Fill out whatever you want to say, add a link, add a photograph, and it just goes. You can set up the scheduled time. You can um, adjust the times. So we found that, um, actually, it'd be probably easy. <coughs> 
So basically you can go in and you can set the times that you want your things to be seen. Am I doing it on time? No, I'm doing it right. So you can go in, I'll basically show you how this works really, really well. If I can remember the password, that would be a magical moment. Oh, see? Okay, so basically what you could go in and everything is automatically set up on my on my accounts. So what you can do is you can go in and adjust the scheduler. So for instance, our Twitter feed is every few hours. We blast Twitter seven times a day. And you say, wow, that sounds like too much. It's not. I get an average of probably two followers a day and possibly three or four retweets a day. And that's off of seven. And that's on a good day. That's not even like, that's if people are actually paying attention. And don't even say if that's a Monday because forget it. <laughs> on a Monday you get more lost in social media than you understand it because people are too focused on work, they're not paying attention to it. We go every two hours on Twitter and I thought, smoke breaks. When do people check their phone? When they leave the building to go take a break. When they leave their office. When they stop every few hours to grab a drink or grab a granola bar. That's when they want to check their Twitter feed. So every two hours I have it set up to tweet something. The Twitter on it and Facebook, you cannot post similar things. At the, at, it has to be within a day or two of each other. Again, you can set up and run the entire week within a few hours. It, it, hours. It just it works seamlessly. I wish I could show it to you. I really apologize. <laughs> My, I'm so bad with passwords. Amanda, do you want to borrow mine? I can log in. Mm, what's that? Do you want to borrow mine? I can log in. Yeah. Say so I have my password. Please. Yeah, everything's auto programmed on mine. <laughs> Just will let you sign in also with your Facebook, your LinkedIn, Twitter. Like I said, all those are linked in to it. Um, you can post Pinterest. Pinterest just got added to it. It's still a little bit wonky. I still haven't figured it out how it's yet. Um, score. Okay. Awesome. So you can go in here and you can see that she has her personal Twitter, her personal LinkedIn, her Google Plus, that's something we don't use as Google Plus, that and her Facebook. <laughs> you can connect more. These are everything that it supports. And like I said, if you have a paying account, it can link more as many. Um, going. There is a queue. This is where you would type everything. Like, hello, podcast. Feel free to do some. It's fine. And then you would add it to the queue. And basically, what that tells you is that 457, her, her tweet is going to go out. And it just went to Twitter. You can then select sure. all the accounts. Hmm? Hit share now. <laughs> share now. Share now. You can also hit share now. You can also hit edit, and you can hit move to top. These are all adjustable, and that's something I'll get. That's something that's beautiful. Say that you send something out for Monday, and all of a sudden the event got moved, and you have to move all your tweets about that event. It is very simple to do. You can just use this little thing, and just adjust where it falls in the days. It's very, it's, like I said, this is the simplify, simplify, simplify thing. It does show you analytics. You want to see 
how many people retweeted you, favorited it, clicked on it, everything. It'll tell you all that. So you want to see your ROI on Twitter? It's right there. And I say ROI is a return on investment. I'm sorry. That's a, that's a marketing term. I'm not very marketing, but um, I'm not very marketing, but I know all the terms. Um, but you want to see a return on investment for Twitter? That would be it right there. How many people are seeing you? Guess what? Um, no retweets, no favorites, no mentions, but one click? That's a success. And I'll get onto that and why in a minute. This is your scheduler. Um, and again, your times are all adjustable and you can delete and add. And then you can do every day or you can select certain days. So you can, it's completely customizable. And settings, of course, that's just where all your, it has a link shortening and you can completely trash your whole queue. There's other things like that. Um, really simple to use. I, I highly, it's the one I suggest. I, so you want to use a scheduler. It'll cut down your time significantly. Um, the, also, the fun thing is with it is that you don't have to be thinking about it. It's no longer on your mind. So you have a blog post you published on Monday. You can now send it out every single day of the week, and you don't have to think about it. Um, I'll be driving my car, and my notifications will go off that I tweeted. I'm driving my car. <laughs> I didn't really do it. <laughs> but the scheduler did it for me. It's, it's highly successful. It, it will drastically cut your time suckage. Um, okay, the last one, I think it's the last piece I have about why social media sucks, is nobody listens. And this goes back to the wonderful Facebook algorithm, Twitter being a nasty cocktail party, and nobody's paying attention to you. Um, <coughs> engage. Last year, my thing was content. It's what you're saying. Thanking somebody for a retweet is like a handshake and a high five at the same time. You are not talking to them anymore. If you're just standing there shouting at them, this is my blog, this is my podcast, this is what I do, you should come and read my stuff, blah, 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 blah. Guess what? They're tuning you out. You're not thanking them. You're not embracing them. Don't pay attention to your numbers. Don't pay attention to how many likes and retweets and everything else you got that week. Yeah, it's great to gauge it once a week, but don't freak out if you send out 12 tweets in one day and not one new follower. Instead, be thankful for who you do have and embrace them and thank them and give them things. <laughs> and I say that because um, a good part of business is, you know, give them the, the free moment to say thank you and give them something from your business, whether sell something, a coupon, a free ebook, special access to a video, a special access to a blog. Thank those who do follow you. They'll, they'll appreciate it and they'll remember you more. And that's why I wrote Embrace and Grow. Because as much as we want to say Twitter and Facebook is this tight little bubble, they still tell people about it. You heard Chris stand up here this morning and talk about people that he knew um, who approached him the very first pod camp and things like that. Um, it, and it was word of mouth. Word of mouth is still very strong in marketing and letting people know. Um, if I find a blog that's interesting, I will tell people on Twitter. And Twitter is just the same as word of mouth. It's just a louder audience. Instead of me telling two people, I'm telling hundreds of people. So embrace, your, embrace who you do have and engage with them. And what is your content saying? So you have this great idea that you want to be on all the platforms, 
you just don't know what to say, or you feel like you're shouting the same thing over and over again. Look at my blog, look at my blog, look at my blog, look at my blog. No. <laughs> That's your description of what you're doing. Okay, great, you're writing a blog about food. Wonderful. Do you have a contest? Great, I can win tickets to a restaurant. I can win a gift card. If I retweet you, wonderful. I'm more inclined to retweet you if you say there's a contest. Wonderful, it's just a, it's just a word of mouth thing. You just gave them something for free, basically. Sale, you're a brick and mortar. You're having a sale this week. You should be talking about that at least twice a day, at least, so you're not lost in the shuffle. Any news that's going on with your business should be there. That also should be linked back to your blog. That's a very important part. You should have a blog part on your website or just be running WordPress period for your business and make sure all news flows back to there. Um, just because you can get a little bit more wordy there and share more good news and pictures and things like that, which you can't really do on Twitter. You can't get very wordy. Any special events, that should also be included. Um, and the last one is articles related to your business. Now you may say, wait a minute, why am I talking about other people's businesses? It's a trust and personal thing. If you find a blog that's a lot like yours, it's not a jealousy thing if you talk about them. It's a trust thing. You just want to inform your client and your audience of another service. They will still 90% of the time choose you. However, if you found an article like yours, it's a great relationship. We're all a community. So you should post at least two or three times a week an article related to your to what you're talking about. It just grows your community. This is a strategic marketing plan. I posted this last year in my session, um, which was how to start an internet business in one day, which I did. Um, you're gonna test what you planned for your marketing. And I'm saying marketing very loosely as in, how are you going to tell people about your, your creation? Your, you created a blog, great. How are you going to tell people you need a marketing plan? Whether you just are blogging once a day or once a week or once a month, you still need to figure out a way to get it in people's hands. So you start out with the situation analysis and the situation is you need to tell people about your blog. You have objectives. Your objectives are to grow. Strategic initiatives, tactics, implementation. Those are all your plan. Your tactics are who or what are you going to use? And then implement it. Fire it away. Control it. Use a social scheduler. Track it. Guess what? It fails. What do you do? You try it again, you try something new, you try something different. So Facebook is failing you because of the algorithm. Congrats, it failed everybody. You're not the only business, you're not the only blog that got lost in the Facebook algorithm update. The only way around it is to pay for it. I post to Facebook five to six times a day for my business. I've never once heard a complaint that I'm flooding them and I have over 500 followers, which is great for my business, wonderful, but they never once complained that I'm flooding them because it turns out they only see one post a day. They don't see six, they see one. And again, that first 100 people that saw you on Facebook in the morning are, this, are different than the second 100 people that saw you on Facebook in the afternoon. So you can actually repost stuff so you got to try something different. So again, you try again. So you try something different. I put Periscope up there because I just had this very interesting conversation a few weeks ago about um, a Periscope for business. And I have like three minutes left, but thank God this is not. Yep, that's the end. So Periscope for business. So I said Periscope is a great tool if you know how to use it. It's like Pinterest. Um, and Meerkat, 
and Snapchat are the same way, but they're not the same way. And I'm embracing Periscope because you can actually save your video now. And that's the reason why I liked it so much. So I went into a business, and she's in an event space here in Pittsburgh, and she was discussing that she has a new project coming out to vamp up part of the, um, part of the exterior of the event space. She needs an Indiegogo. And I tell her, well, we're in a networking evening out, and another person had mentioned, have you tried Periscope in your event space? And she said, no, what is that? And a week later, I had a meeting with her, and I said, well, let me tell you about how I think it could help your business. It could hurt your business, and the reason why Periscope hurts business is because there's no way to put a, click a clickable link in it. That is the biggest problem with Periscope. There is no way to get back to your content. You literally have to write down your website and hold it in front of the camera. There is no way to support a business on it. These people who are on there right now who are thinking they're going to become Periscope stars, probably are not. Because there's no way to lead them back. They're literally holding up pieces of paper while they're scribbling down names and things. <laughs> I watch, uh, I, I watch them all the time, and I wonder, like, what are you selling me? But I literally said to her, so promote your Periscope weeks in advance and say on this date and this time, I'm going live on Periscope. You can ask me any question about my event space, and I'm going to give you a tour. And I said, and just promote the hell out of it for weeks. Treat it like an event. She said, oh, that's on, she's like, I can see that. So then I tell her how to use it. I said, now at the end of it, you can save the video. So here's what, if I were you, I would give a tour, and then I would sit it down, I would turn the camera on yourself and let them type you questions about your event space. You know, can I use it for a winter wedding? Can I do this? Can I do that? And then answer them. And then guess what, at the end of it, say thank you, save the video, and now you can put it on your website. And it goes under the Q&A on your website. Very simple. However, again, it will fail because there's no link. <laughs> that's the only part I have about Periscope that I say is great. But however, figure out a way to make it work. It's a new tool. Don't dismiss it just because of that. It's a new tool. Try something different with it. Um, make more pictures, more pictures, or make an ad. If you're not, if you're just saying words, you're not getting their attention. There's a ridiculous statistic, and I don't know what it is this week. It changes every week on how many more links are clicked that have pictures attached to them. So, add a picture, even if it's not the picture from your WordPress, your featured picture. Add something else. Uh, make it personal. Uh, tell a story. You're a storyteller now. You have to tell a story. You, you want to... I hate to go back to what Chris was saying at 10 o'clock today, but he asked every morning on his newsletter, what did you have for drink this morning? You made it personal. <coughs> Ask them, how is your day going? Your contents or your comments on Facebook may fill up with like ridiculousness, but you can see it. If um, you follow uh, your jag off on Facebook, he does it all the time. You know, he'll ask a question at the end of his post, and his comments will fill up, 30 some deep. More pictures, more interaction, it just happens. He'll shout out once a day a question. What did you do today that made you jag off? And they'll, he'll literally get like stories like crazy. Um, make it make a commercial. You have the power to do this. Just because you're on non-television on NBC or PCNC, guess what? YouTube commercials are just as popular. Make a commercial. Put it on your site. Tell them what you want to do. And then, uh, lastly, if you don't have a podcast or a blog, add it. Try something different. Um, it's it won't hurt. So I hope everybody goes away from this with maybe some new ideas on how you want to attack what you want to do. Um, 
if you have a blog, if you have a podcast, if you have a business, maybe this will help you streamline it and work more efficiently. Who am I? <laughs> uh, my name is Amanda. I am a mixed media artist, first and foremost. Graphic design, photography, video, um, all that fine art, painting, upcycle artist. And I run Bold Pittsburgh. It, I'm the chief editor. I have seven other writers with me. We do a, an internet magazine, a blog, and a podcast. And that's all. Any questions? Yes. Situation analysis, objectives, strategic initiatives, tactics, implementation, and control. It's a strategic marketing plan. If you actually go to college for marketing, this is what they'll teach you in their textbooks. The thing about it is, is that it changes depending on your business. <coughs> and I'm constantly revamping this. I revisit it every few weeks to see what's working and what's not. Instagram and Pinterest have to go through this constantly because it doesn't, they don't work for every business. What you're saying on Twitter and Facebook, go through this because you may have to change what you're saying and what you're doing. Any other questions? Okay, you have about 10. Oh, go ahead. Wait a second. Um, so you talked about the social media Monday, but also the importance of engagement and thanking followers for retweets and stuff like that. So how do you do that? You taught my you caught my Easter egg. Congratulations. Because <laughs> that's the next question I always get. So the question was was um so if you're limiting your social medias only to Mondays or Tuesdays or whatever day, how do you engage with your clients? Well a lot of studies show people respond best to that, like within 24 hours is best, within an hour is best. Yeah. That's so, what I always tell them. Yeah. Is you may have to say a day for your initial marketing. <laughs> However, I suggest you spend 20 minutes in checking your comments. That isn't a huge time suckage. Guess what? I could find you extra 20 minutes if I just ask you four questions. Everybody does it. I just watched a video on Gary Gary Verchak. I always mispronounce his last name, but he literally just said it on Twitter two days ago that he could find you an extra 45 minutes in your day just by asking you three questions. So I can find you an extra 20 minutes just by asking you a few questions. Those 20 minutes, you can be engaging. You can be checking your comments. If you have notifications that show up on your phone, Great, answer them if you have the time. If you're in the middle of a meeting, don't. <laughs> that is the most ignorant thing you can do, right? So put the notifications away, shut it on, do not disturb, you're in a meeting. You come out of that meeting, you're about to drive home in your car, check your notifications real quick. Even if it's 20 comments on a Facebook post, only two or three of those may be questions back to you. And that's on a like I said, that's a good day in your marketing. You may have no comments, you may have no retweets, you may have no nothing. And if you're doing the whole like thanking every single person for a retweet, that's a time suckage. Don't go on there and say, thanks for the retweet, thanks for the retweet, thanks for this, thanks for this. Throw out a general tweet and say, hey, I'd like to thank da 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 for all the retweets today. I'd like to thank my new followers today, but da, 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 and list their names. Do a follow Friday. I, I, I am strictly against follow Fridays only because the rule with them is, and the reason why they were started, was because you were supposed to follow one person for follow Friday and tell me why you followed them. So don't do the whole like follow Friday, da, 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 unless you fully intend on telling me why I should follow them. But however, if you tell me, thanks for the retweet, Amanda, 
and this other person, that other person, that other person, that's great. And those little favorite stars that you get, those are even better because people are coming back to you. Do you think those two the favorites or just the retweets? Just the retweets. A lot of people don't like to know that their favorites are known. And I don't, there's a notification that comes up in your Twitter feed that says like um, somebody favorited your tweet. I don't necessarily. If it's a tweet about something like an event, I might private DM them just because my media company is who it is and we work with um, events and stuff in Pittsburgh and things to do. If say I write a review on Great and Grace and they favorite my tweet, I will then send them a DM and just say, thank you for favoring my tweet. I hope you don't mind that I really enjoyed breakfast. I wrote a really great blog post, hope you enjoy it. Nine times out of 10, I get an answer from them that just says, we're happy you came out for breakfast. Thanks for the wonderful blog piece. We favorited it so that we can share it later on in the week. A lot of the times, that's all it is. They're only favoriting it to keep it somewhere so they can send it back out later on in the week. Yeah. It's like their little place to hide stuff. So, any other questions? Okay. Yay, done. I made it through another one this year. <laughs>